Hello everyone, it's Chow here, and today we are going to talk a little bit about character displacement. So let's get started. Now, character displacement, what exactly is it? Well, it's nothing really more than a situation where differences in similar species are more extreme in regions where the species co-occur, but are less extreme where the species ranges do not overlap with each other. And so let's look at this situation over here. We have, let's say, three islands to make it a little bit more simple. We have three islands, islands one, two, and three. On island one, there's only species A. On island two, there's only species B. And on island three, species A and B are found together. So let's look at island one first. On island one, there's only species A. And you can see that species A, in terms of its beak size, so x-axis is beak size, y-axis is percent of individuals in each class size. And you can see that on island one, where only species A is found, species A has, a, a, its, its overall distribution of its beak size tends towards the smaller end of the spectrum, but it's quite wide in its range. Similarly, for species B on island 2, it has a sort of, you know, lean in terms of its spectrum towards the higher end of the scale. It tends to have higher, larger beaks. But overall, the extremes are going to be very dispersed. There's going to be a wide range of beak sizes. And you can see that the beak sizes of species A and B overlap in individuals where they're found alone on their individual islands. But when you have island 3, a situation where both species A and B are found together, you see something very interesting. You can see that the beak sizes are actually dispersed and displaced to more extreme ends. So species A originally tends towards the smaller end of the spectrum. It actually tends even more towards the smaller end of the spectrum when species A and B are found together. Similarly, species B, it tends originally towards the higher end of the spectrum, but that is even more extreme. It's even pushed more towards the higher ends of the spectrum over here when they're found together. So one way you can maybe think about it is that when you have the species on their own in their isolated island, they have a pretty wide range in terms of their characteristic. But when they're found together, there might be competition if you have something, uh, a beak size that's towards the center over here. So the, the, the birds or, or whatever, in this case we're talking about beaks, so it's birds, they actually will evolutionarily displace themselves in terms of their characteristics to maybe feed on different niches. So maybe a smaller beak size is gonna feed on small, uh, birds with smaller beak sizes are gonna feed on smaller seeds, birds with larger beak sizes feed on larger beaks, uh, larger seeds. Overall, through character displacement, you can have niche partitioning events that occur to allow the birds to be able to survive together, sympatrically, co-occur, and still be able to continue on their generation without aggressive competition with one another. So character displacement is nothing really more than a situation where differences in similar species are more extreme in regions where the species co-occur, but are less extreme where the species ranges do not overlap with each other. And so this is a very key concept that can allow for speciation to occur in situations where two species are found together. Or another way to think about it is it can maintain a barrier by having this situation where overall your fitness might be maximized if you choose one extreme over the other. And by having that maximization of one population feeding on one group of the extremes and another population feeding or utilizing a resource on the other extreme, you can maintain this barrier and ultimately can decrease competition, increase the partitioning of a resource or resources, and allow for sympatric survival and maintenance of some kind of a barrier. So character displacement is a very crucial concept in terms of evolution, and this is definitely something you should get to know and keep in your mind as you're going through your studying and as you are prepping for that exam coming up. So I hope you all enjoyed this. Hope you all found it at least mildly useful. And as always, best of luck studying, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.